good. Good morning. Welcome to Salem United Methodist Church this morning. I'm Pastor Dan, and I'm so glad you're here to join us this morning. I'd like to inform you of a few events happening in the life of the church, but first, I'm going to let Lori come up and give you some announcements. Good morning, everybody. Um, if you haven't noticed, we have a little trunk up here, and if you haven't quite figured out or heard anything about it, we are having our annual trunk or treat at the end of this month. It's going to happen the last Sunday of October. It's kind of where we have it. So it's going to be October the 29th of this year. I have the our infamous Salem clipboard, right? Um, we have our clipboard to sign up for a trunk. Several of you have already mentioned that you are know what you're doing and you're planning on it. Um, and I'm so excited about this year's event. It's going to be bigger and better um, than before. One of the things that we have this year is we have face painting that's going to be happening um, along with some other outside organizations, including our uh, Boy Scouts that's going to be having um, some activities there as well. So I'm going to pass this around here in a minute to sign up. Um, also, as part of our trunk or treat, we need candy. For those of you that work it, y'all know that we have groves and groves of kids um, that come to this event. Uh, and last year, we uh, gave out all the candy that we had um, and could have used more. Uh, the kids were so excited to be there, um, and I come around with my little wagon and I refill buckets as much as we possibly can. So. Our little trunk here is our candy collector. Uh, so feel free to start bringing in your candy collections. Um, there, you may see more little trunks appear around the church. Just know that these are our candy collectors uh, for our trunk or treat that is happening at the end of the month. Uh, and lastly, if you're still looking for a way to serve in our church, um, I just so happen to have a couple of sign-up sheets for our kids' ministry that are just back here behind the trunk or treat. If you want to take a peruse through, see if you want to help out, um, feel free to stick your name in and then I will uh, follow up with you. Um, but we're excited about our trunk or treat event. Thank you very much, Lori. As you can see, too, our altar table looks a little different and really beautiful. So thank you for, for those who helped with that. Um, today is World Communion Sunday. Uh, it's a day when we recognize our unity with all churches in the name of Jesus Christ around the world. Uh, and one of the ways that we do that is through providing a special offering. If you look in your pews, you'll see a, an envelope there. Um, that's, that's in the pews in front of you. This is a gift above and beyond what you normally give. Uh, and when you give to World Communion Sunday, that money goes towards scholarships for people around the world uh, so that we're helping people from all nations uh, and all different uh, types of people in this country to uh, people from other nations who are attending our, our schools as well um, to help sponsor students in their education. Some of them in their seminary education as well. You can uh, make, your, make your checks out to World Communion Sunday or put cash in the, in the envelopes, too. Let's see. The youth are going uh, on Stone Soup and to Stone Soup and Serving today. Uh, we've got a busy day, y'all. So, so the youth are doing that with Stone Soup. And then at 4.30, we have our Blessing of the Animals service. I know that's new for a lot of you. Uh, but 4.30, under the arbor, you can bring your pets photo of your pets if they don't travel well or <clears throat> if they are a little misbehaved um, it may be better to bring a picture <laughs> yeah um, or ashes of them as well of course uh, Wednesday nights alive have been rocking and rolling and going strong um, it looks like we will have the famous nacho ladies serving again this Wednesday. So uh, be sure to show up for that. We have programs for all ages, uh, and we are really getting into it with our Methodist 101 class for the adults. Methodist men are meeting on Thursday, October 5th. They have restarted and are meeting again, so please be sure to join that uh, if you'd like to be a part of Methodist men. 
Also, um, there's a baby shower next week uh, for Corey and myself and the baby-to-be and Alice, of course, as well. And let me tell you, there is no one more uh, anticipating and ready for this baby to come than Corey. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm excited for it as well, though, and, and uh, we thank you for, for all that you guys are doing in support of us. Uh, community events, too, coming up. Uh, Mount Carmel has a fish fry on the October on uh, Sunday, October fifteenth. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I always like fish fries as well. Uh, and then C. John's has a community yard sale. Any other announcements for the life of the church? All right, let us begin. Again, welcome to Salem United Methodist Church this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks to you this day because you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We, we ask that you teach us to render back to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not only with our lips but with our whole lives, turning over our duties, our sorrows, our joys, and our lives and sacrifice to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you would, please join with me as we join with Christians around the world and throughout all time in affirming our historic faith together in the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as you are able. I believe in God, the Almighty Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Join us in song, and we'll start this morning with This is the Day. <clears throat> This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad.
told that the children work very hard every month to learn a new Bible verse, and we have one of them who's going to share that Bible verse with us. God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Romans 15, 14. I gotta ask you a question. Think real hard before you answer. Who takes care of you? God. No, besides God, who else takes care of you? People. Besides people, who people. takes care of you? Who? The parents. Your parents, your mom and dad? Yeah. Do you like them when they take care of you? Do you like it when they take care of you? Yeah. Do you like it when they say it's time for dinner? Do you like it when they say, it's time to clean up your room? No. You don't like that. <laughs> but, you, they, but they take care of you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a better life, actually. Do what now? It's a better life. It's a better life? Yeah. 
<laughs> Part of it. Part of it, okay. So it's okay sometimes when your mom and dad takes care of you. You like it when they, do you like it when they do good things for you? Do you like it when they buy you new clothes? New toys? Yes. yes. <laughs> There's someone else who takes care of you. God. God. If God can, you know who, who God takes care of? Kids. Kids. Also, he takes care of the birds. Uh, have you seen the flowers outside? Yeah. Do you think he takes care of the flowers? Even the flowers? <laughs> Do you think he takes care of the animals too? Yeah. He takes care of all, he hey, just... Man. What? Take care of the parents. He takes care of the parents. That's right. God's like a parent to us, isn't he? He takes care of us, too, just like our mom and dad takes care of us. He takes care of us. And God loves everything. He takes care of the animals, the birds, the plants. Yeah. Wow. And have you ever heard of don't worry about today, don't worry about tomorrow? Have you ever heard that before? Don't worry about what's happening. I heard happened? it's October. <laughs> you heard it's October. Yeah, it's October. <laughs> He, he takes take he, he takes care of the animals, lions, and all. Have you ever heard, don't worry about tomorrow? Tomorrow, worry about, take care of self. Do you worry about tomorrow? You do worry about tomorrow. You have to go to school tomorrow, right? I do. You do. You know, no, yes. I never have school. You never have school. <laughs> I have to go to school. You what? You had to go. I had to go to school too. I had to go to school on Wednesdays. Wednesday. But anyway, God takes care of everything. And you don't, we don't worry about what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself, right? So, so we now we know that God takes care of us like He takes care of our, just like our parents take care of us, right? <clears throat> so, let's bow. Bow your heads, guys. Father God, be with each one of these boys and girls. Let them know that you're in charge. You take care of each and every one of our needs, all of us, just like you take care of the animals and the plants and everything in the world. Just be with them throughout this week. We ask us in your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Okay. First scripture this morning comes from Joel 2 verse 21 through 27. Don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field, for the wilderness pastures will soon be green. The trees will again be filled with fruit, fig trees and grapevines will be loaded down once more. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give back to you what you have lost, to the swarming locust, to the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the cutting locust. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Once again you will have all the food you want, and you will praise the Lord your God, who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Then you will know that I am among my people of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced. Our second scripture reading for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. Hear now the word of the Lord according to the Gospel of Matthew. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or what you drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more, ma more valuable than they? And can any of you be worrying by worrying at a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, he will not, so much, he, he will not much more clothe you, you little of faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking through a sermon series on... Um, exploring generosity and gratitude, uh, and today we're looking at the ideas of scarcity and of abundance. Whenever two people join together in marriage, they have to decide how they're going to share all aspects of their life together. For many couples, it's the linking of finances that creates some of the most stress. When Corey and I got married, we had to figure out how we were going to share our money, as many couples have to figure out. How to pay bills, how to give to the church, and also how to save. And then Alice was born, and we had to, the responsibility of caring for her, and now we're waiting for another baby boy to be born. And I feel the weight of responsibility for this family even more. But I look back on how God has helped me along the way. Uh, no matter how I worried along the way, God has always provided. And we've always had enough for all of our needs. Every family and every couple, every individual face challenges and differences, stressors along the way, worries and responsibility. You see, the problem starts when we start looking at our world with a mindset of scarcity, meaning a mindset of not having enough of something. That could be time or money or anything else, really. When we worry about not having enough, it makes it hard for us to focus on anything else. Remember back with me, if you will. I know we don't like to go there, but, but try to remember back with me to the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and the shutdown. What were people so scared about not having enough of? <laughs> Toilet paper, right. We will be telling our grandchildren or great-grandchildren about the great TP shortage of 2020. And we might be able to laugh now about the shortage of toilet paper and how people were running out scared and buying all that they could. But in reality, we saw it bring out some of the worst in us. And so this morning, we're going to look at how we might avoid a mindset of scarcity with generosity and with kindness. We're going to also look at how during times of real scarcity, we can lean on God and our community of faith. The passage in Matthew this morning found right here in the very middle of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and his teaching should tell us just how important it is. Jesus is setting a framework for how we are to live our lives together in community. And he starts by telling us to trust in the one true God. No one can serve two masters, he says. Either you hate one and love the other, or will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money or wealth. 
You cannot serve both God and money or wealth. The word translated here as money or wealth is really of Aramaic origin. That's Jesus' native language. And the word there is mammon, referring to the false god of Syrian and, Chaldean, uh, and Chaldeans, the god of money and of wealth. Reference to mammon shows our all-encompassing nature that, that, that wealth and money tend to hold over us and the power it can have over our lives. If we let it, money can be just like a god that we worship. It's not uncommon for us to hear that money is not evil or it's morally neutral. It's like a brick that can be used to build a house or be thrown through a window. It has no moral qualities. It's how we use it to build or to destroy. But it's also perhaps something more than that. It can be a tool in the hands of the poor to survive, but in sufficient quantities and hands of powerful people, it can also become like a god. All you have to do is examine the ways in which we talk about and treat money and wealth and how it controls in our world today. It has been used to buy land and people, armies and elections, and even our justice system. We cannot underestimate the power of wealth to control our lives if we let it. And the truth is, we all experience worry. Jesus reveals to us today, however, where that worry comes from. And it comes when we place our trust not in God, but in things of the world and find our self-value in things of the world. And when we let the world set expectations on how we are to be successful by their standards. Sometimes we don't even realize it. I was uh, at home the other day and... and uh, how many of y'all had those, uh, those guys selling solar come by your house? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it's not the most fun experience. I, I remember we had it a lot in Texarkana and in in the new subdivision we were in, and we bought our home there. And so we had these guys trying to sell solar, and they kept coming by the house, and it was annoying. But I had one come by the house we're renting here in Benton, and he said, are you the homeowner? And I said, instinctually, yes. And then I was like, well, wait a minute, no. I said, I'm renting. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't help you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I just kind of shut the door. But a little piece of me felt like, wait a minute, I'm not a homeowner anymore. And society tells us that in order to be successful, you have to own a home. And so a little piece of me was like, oh, I, I missed that, right? But the truth is, that's not what makes us successful or valued. I think about it too when I, when I see Alice and her getting ready in the morning and I'm just as frustrated as can be. It happened again this morning uh, when Corey was arguing with Alice over what she was going to wear. If you know Alice, you know that she has to be dressed to the nines. Almost all the time. Not even just to church. She wants to wear the prettiest dress. She wants to wear her princess shoes. And she wants to put lipstick on, right? That's just who she is. And she's five! <laughs> I don't know where she gets this. But we have expectations that the world puts on us on what it means to be successful and valued in our world today. But then Jesus tells us, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sorrow, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? It's not about how much you produce, how much you work, how hard you, you work. It's not about the things that you have, the wealth that you accumulate. You're valued for you. And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, 
how they grow and neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. All the gold in the world. And Solomon had a lot of it. Could not be better than how God will clothe and treat you. You all know that pastors preach to themselves, right? You know that, right? Did you know that? We do. And so I'm a worrier. Even though I know that worrying will not help me, even though I know that God will be there for me, I still worry. But the good news is that God helps those who worry. Especially those who worry that they do not have enough. First, God helps us to find the pla and place value in the things that really do matter. First, God helps us to find and place value in the things that really do matter. Our relationships with one another and seeking after the new kingdom that Jesus has shown us is actually possible. And so we have to learn to let go of the material stuff that holds us back. We tend to think of our faith and church as only dealing with spiritual matters. But in reality, our faith in Jesus should impact all aspects of our life. Every aspect. We should work and earn and spend and give and save differently because we are Christians. Jesus tells us that we are of value not because of what we produce, but because of who we are. We are all humans created in the image of God, more valuable to God than the birds of the air or the lilies of the field that God also loves and cares for. Often the first thing that we do when we meet people, new people, especially men, if you notice this, the first thing you do, hi, what do you do, right? We size each other up, ranking each other based on our status of job or the amount of money that we make. And so we worry about climbing the social and the economic ladders set before us in, the, in order to feel of worth. Y'all, pastors are not immune from this either, right? Where do you pastor? Oh, how many do they worship, right? We do it too. But the freedom here is that God says you are all of value because God has created you and nothing else. And because you yourself as a person belong to God, you are of value. Jesus tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. Let me be clear. Jesus is not promising us riches beyond belief. But what he is promising is that if we seek to live out the kingdom, meaning the kingdom of faith, the community of faith, together, living with God, loving our neighbor and our God, there will be no need among us. We are to be a people who clothe those who have no clothes, to feed those who are hungry, to shelter those who have no place to rest their head. And so if we are truly living into that kingdom, there will be no one left among us with need. Jesus finishes this discourse like a loving parent. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Unburden yourself. Let the worry go. Find peace with God in this community that loves and supports you. Jesus knows that we face our own challenges. Today's troubles are enough. And he's telling us to take it one day at a time. One day. This day, today, is World Communion Sunday. And on World Communion Sunday, United Methodists, in conjunction with other denominations and believers around the world, participate in communion and recognize our unity in Jesus Christ and the one true God. 
followers of Jesus Christ in large churches and small on farms and in cities, in ornate buildings and under tents, gather and receive bread and cup of Holy Communion this day. Some will receive cubes of bread, some will tear from a common loaf, some will receive wafers, some will drink from a common chalice, some will dip pieces of bread in the cup in some individual glasses. Some will use wine and some juice, some will offer both. Pastors will lead a variety of liturgies in many different languages. Clergy will dress traditionally, formally, or casually. Despite the differences in our denominations and our traditions, we all celebrate our unity in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, this day together. And so as we remember that unity of the church, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church joined together, we also remember how we can become the kingdom of God to one another and meet those needs where they are. And that if we're truly living out that kingdom, there will be none with need among us. Let us pray. Lord God, this day, help us to remember all that you've shown us on how we are to treat one another. And most importantly, Lord, help us to know our value in you. To push off the things that would tell us in our world that that are needed to be successful and rather to see our value in you and in this community of faith. Help us to love one another that we might actually see your kingdom come here on heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now if we could have uh, our, our tithes and offerings come forward in just a minute as we pray for those. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the ways in which you've been generous with us. We ask that you'd help us to return your generosity, to show all that you've done for us, and to be a people who meet the needs of those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One, two, three.
One, two, three, four. begin to join around the table together. If you would, uh, please turn to the invitation uh, on 12 in your page 12 in your hymnal. Know that this table is not Salem United Methodist Church's table. It's not the United Methodist Church's table but it's Christ's table. And so you don't have to be a member of this church or any church in order to come forward. You just have to want to live in peace with one another and want to love and know God a little bit more. And so you are invited to join us in communion this day as we remember communion of those around the world and throughout all time uniting us one church together. One of the things that we do before we take communion is we confess our sins before God and one another. We do that through our confession together. When we do this, it's like coming around the table together at your own dinner table, making ourselves right with one another and right with God. So let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now let us offer each other signs of peace and reconciliation. Please turn to your neighbor and offer the peace of Christ. begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witness to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke it. 
he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which has been given for you. And likewise, after the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, we offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. A holy and living sacrifice that we may be a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our commitment with your holy church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. If those assisting could come forward.
Now let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If you would please rise for our final hymn. First. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Receive this final blessing and benediction. Go as the people of God, the Father, who cares about the sparrows of the air and the lilies of the field. How much more does he care for you? Go as the people of Jesus Christ, who showed us what it looks like to live a life of abundance, giving all of himself to all those around him. And go as the people of the Holy Spirit, called to live a life of abundance and not of scarcity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.